So what do you think would happen the next day? Let's say we discover life. It's Proxima Centauri B. It's um it looks just like slime mold, like you got on your, you know, brie cheese or whatever. We discover it. What would happen the next day? And they were like, oh, this would be transformative. And, and, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, total Cassandra about this, but I said, I don't think anything would happen. And like, what are you talking about? It would be transformational. I'm like, I stipulate that life exists. Go down to like the river, you know, I'm in San Diego, go down to the Pacific Ocean, scoop up a glass, mm-hmm. you know, um, you're going to find life in there. And what are we doing? What are we doing to our earth? We're destroying it callously. We're like pumping crap into there. Like we have this toxic waste spill a couple of months ago in San Diego. I couldn't go to the beach. What, what, let me take it a step further. Do you know how many, well, you know how many people, I'm sorry that you do know, but how many people died in the 20th century? Killed. These are advanced civils. This isn't a slime mold. We kill, we maim, we harm, we hurt, we hate. I don't think anything would happen the next day. We go back to what we had. And I said, if that weren't proof enough, life has been discovered at least two or three times just in my professional career. Once in 1996, these Allen Land Hills meteorites in Antarctica, this so like microbial respiration processes. Still, we don't know. It was a press conference held by Bill Clinton on the White House lawn that's featured in the movie Contact. Um, repurposed for that movie. And um, and then there's uh, and then there's this um, the, this phosphorus life this this the toxic life in the pools of Mono Lake, many you know extremophile. We don't give a crap. We continue to tre- so why are we thinking that like our salvation from whence will our salvation come as the Bible says? <laughs> like it's not going to change how we are. It's not going to magnify how I treat you or you treat me. And and we're pretty knowledgeable people, you and I, compared to you know lay people. Well, okay, that's interesting. That's a really interesting argument. I I wonder if you're right, but I, my intuition is, uh, I can, I can maybe present a different argument that you can think about in the realm of things you care about even deeper, which is like what happens once we figure out the origins of the universe. Like how would that change your life? I yeah. would I, I would say there are certain discoveries that even in their very idea will change the fabric of society. I tend to see if there's definitive proof that there's life and the more complex, the more powerful that uh, idea is no, elsewhere, that I'm not exactly sure how it will change society um, because it's such a slap in the face. <laughs> it's like a, such a humbling force or maybe not, or maybe it's a motivator to say, um, yeah, I don't know which force would take over. Maybe it would be governments with military uh, start to think like, well, how, how do we kill it? <laughs> if there's a lot of life out there, how do we create the de- defenses? How do we extract it? Or or yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. mine it for mm-hmm. uh, for benefits. All those, I mean, it, I just see like uh, there's a hundred million literal counterexamples of that. I mean, right now there's like, like 700 million kids in poverty and like, we just, how do we go about our life and just not deal with that? I mean, I look, I put it aside. I eat hamburgers and, I, you know, in a hundred years I'll be canceled for being a, you know, a carnivore or whatever. But, you know, so obviously to get through life, you have to make certain compromise. You're not going to think about certain things. But I, I, I just think there is a sort of wish fulfillment. Like every time there's water, why are we going to Mars and digging and flying this cool ass helicopter? I'm, mm-hmm. We're looking for water. Like stipulate that water was there. Like, I believe there was water. I think we should investigate and see what the geology was like. But but don't you think, so, so you're saying- but Don't think you're going to get meaning from it. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I'm not saying it's not worth doing. I'm, I'm just saying there's a wish fulfillment aspect that people will find meaning for life from science. Okay, but there's a, there's a complicated line here. What, what if it's this intelligent civilization living, obviously- probably not on Mars, but somewhere like uh, in a neighboring galaxy that we, uh, sorry, in, 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 a neighbor, in a neighboring star system. star system that we discover, don't you think that had a profound change in meaning? I mean, I guess, again, I assume that because of this panspermic process or whatever, that the probability is much, much greater than zero. I mean, it's not one, 100%, but it's, it's much likelier than not that at least some living material from Earth has ejaculated itself into the solar system, into the universe, right? Into our galaxy. Beep that, please. <laughs> <laughs> As well. That's right. So I, like, 
the fact that that could happen and that you're holding a piece, you know, from a planetary body, one that couldn't support life as far as we know, uh, but I could give next time if, if you, if you, if you play nice and you come on my podcast someday, I will give you a tiny chunk of Mars. So Mars theoretically could support stuff, right? Moving on up. So, yeah. So I believe that there's, there could be remnants of earth in this. So, so that means there could be evolution. I don't think there's any chance that there's like, you know, people using iPhones and having podcasts and stuff in, in Proxima no, there's, Centauri. There's so much, some chance though, right? So, uh, so again, it, it, yeah. it's, I it's, think the pro well, obviously the simple statement to say it's much, much, much higher probability that life exists than technological life exists. Right. I don't think we can argue that. Um, it doesn't mean it's forbidden. Again, I'm not saying any of this is forbidden, not worth studying, yeah, not interesting. It's, it's a likelihood thing. Yeah. And to answer your, I think you're w wise to push back and like, what does it matter what I'm doing? And I like to think about that. You know, because it's like, what is the value of what you're doing? Like, you have to answer that question or else at the end of your life, you'll have these existential, you know, kind of uh, crises, right? So when I think about like who I am, part of my identity is answering and asking scientific questions. 